Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. <laughs> Yes, yes, I'll keep my day job. That's right. It's funny, it's worth file 57329.5E4. We're the little lettuce and cheese. We're talking about that big, beautiful glowing ball in the night sky, the object of so many dreams, and the inspiration of so many stories and songs. Yes, my little scientist friends, we're talking about... The moon. Hey, if you get on her good side, maybe you can even call her Luna. The moon in all her glory has circled or orbited around the Earth for at least four billion years. Made mostly of rock and metal, this large spherical object is held in its orbit by a mutual gravitational attraction between it and the Earth. Ooh, you are so cute. I think I want to circle around you until the end of time. But where did the moon actually come from? Most scientists believe that the moon was actually a part of the Earth until early in our planet's history, another planet passing by smashed into the Earth, causing one quarter of our young planet to break away. Talk about a hit and run. Uh, um, uh, yeah, officer, I was just floating out here minding my own business when this planet came by out of nowhere. I saw him ran the stop sign and BAM! Did, uh, anybody get that license plate? <laughs> the impact was so powerful that there was nothing left from the other planet but waves of hot splashes of lava and gases catapulted back into space. It is believed that within one Earth day, these waves and splashes pull together with the help of gravity to form the moon. Now, when you look up at the moon, some places appear darker than others. These darker areas are called seas. But don't put your swimming trunks on just yet. You see, these seas aren't filled with water. They're actually plains created by lava spewed from volcanoes that were active early on in the moon's history. The center of the moon, or its core, is thought to be metal, but much, much smaller than the Earth. When it comes to moons, who says size matters? <sighs> So you are outside and you're looking up at the big night sky. It's pretty obvious that the moon is by far the brightest object around. My mother always told me that it's because the moon studied hard and ate all its vegetables. But obviously, people, that's just not true. The moon hates vegetables. <laughs> Seriously. The moon does not produce any light at all. Actually, what is happening is the light from the sun is reflecting off the dust on the moon's surface, illuminating it. Oh, I like that word. Illuminating. Illuminating. Please say it with me one more time. Illuminating. Oh, I had to get that one out. The near future of the moon is similar to its past when it pertains to humans. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first human humans to land on the moon, while their shipmate, Michael Collins, orbited in the NASA lunar module. Neil Armstrong was actually the first human to step onto the moon's surface. When he did, he spoke a line that has become monumental in human history. He said, This is one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Humans haven't returned to the moon in many decades, but that is about to change. Countries including the United States, Japan, and China are all racing to get to the moon so humans... <laughs> That includes you can begin setting up colonies and resort hotels. So one day, you'll be able to choose between going to the beach, mountains, or the moon. Wow! Thanks for listening, my budding little scientist. Until next time, this has been a Funny's Worth File.